Well, welcome to the podcast. My name is Father Bill W. I am an Episcopal priest, also in long-term recovery, uh, and live here in hotter than hell Austin, Texas this summer. So <laughs> we're breaking records and um, people who don't believe in climate change, um, come, come stay here for a, a few days, uh, get, get an experience. Uh, purpose of these podcasts, if, if you're new, uh, and first of all, if you're new to this podcast, go right back to the last episode. <laughs> this is part two. Uh, that we're going to be doing here. But I want you to visit our website. It's called Two Way Prayer. Uh, while you're there, sign up for the newsletter. And um, big uh, shout out to our donors who kind of keep the lights on here. Couldn't do this thing without you guys. And really appreciate the gifts that uh, you send. So um, one, uh, just a re brief reminder that the podcasts are now going on to YouTube. We really just started that a few months back. And the channel is titled Two Way Prayer. I'm going to try to put a link to that in the uh, show notes so you can access it uh, easily and uh, maybe get used to listening uh, via, via that platform. We are well into our new series and it is titled Recovery Writing. And that is also the title of a newly published book, Recovery Writing by Dr. James Ryan. James is in long-term recovery from addiction. He's active in 12-step fellowships. After having worked in the treatment field for a while, once, once he did get uh, uh, sober, he, um, he listened to his inner voice and his inner voice said, you gotta go back to school, kid, and you gotta do what you had intended to do uh, and become who you were meant to be long, long ago. And so he did. He went back to University of Wisconsin at Madison, uh, got his doctorate, and has always been interested in in writing. And I just love it when um, when people find their voice, you know, and uh, are able to uh, become who they were meant to be. And James, that is uh, certainly who you are. So welcome back to the podcast. Really Thanks, Bill. Fun. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here again. It's been fun. Good. It is. We're having, we're having too much fun. We we, we got to be careful on this thing. Uh, we find a rabbit hole and we go down and that's we right. don't get our work done, James. And we don't always catch the rabbit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we didn't get as far as we had hoped in our last episode, but that, that was fine. Uh, so this is going to be part two. And um, what we're looking at here is how writing can help somebody both access their higher power and then deepen the relationship okay. with their higher power through that uh, process. That's where we left off. And, and, and you say yeah. that writing gives us, uh, well, before we get to that, let, let, let's, 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 let's play with this a little bit. So okay. sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause it's where we, it's where we got hung up last time. And, and, and I, I kind of made some notes here that you know, Jung would refer to this as, as a, a way to access the, the self with a capital S, uh -huh. the greater self, call it what you will. You know, uh, sometimes I'm embarrassed with the two-way prayer because people, people sometimes think of it like, a, like going to the slot machines and I'm going to put in a, a, a dollar or a quarter and out comes mm -hmm. a God message like a fortune cookie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, 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 that is not, that is not what this thing is about. Mm -hmm. It's about going deep and parking my ego to one side and listening to another voice. So um, to kind of pick up on that, uh, I think you had a question actually that came in from uh, one of the listeners that, that might yeah. be a good place to start, eh? Sure. Yeah. Uh, this person didn't give me permission to say their name on the podcast. So I won't do that. Yeah. We're anonymous, yeah. but we'll, we'll keep it like that. Of course. Um, but they were very complimentary about the podcast and about what we're doing here. And then they have a question which says, yeah. do you have any writing exercises I can explore regarding the intellect versus God conundrum? It's been over 22 years now and lots of 12 step work with others. And I'm still perplexed around how to identify and work with the higher power slash inner resource. I think this is a great question. I think this question gets right to the heart of what we've been discussing. 
Yeah, so give us a great answer now, James. Oh, no. <laughs> I read this email but and I was it's like... One, it's one stumped. that everybody faces. <laughs> yeah. is, is, isn't that the truth? Yeah, Who every time are, almost. You sit down, right? Yeah, yeah. When I sit down to write, who's in charge? Uh -huh. And if I can free myself up, if I can access insight, inspiration, yeah. uh, the muse that we were talking about, this yeah. is some other part of self. Now, oh, Jung, yeah. sa Jung says, Jung says, and I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out, you know, so bear with me, guys. But it's like there are two centers of consciousness. One is the center that we call ego consciousness. Yeah. My usual mind, pretty comfortable with that. Yeah. Very good for paying taxes and uh, doing bills. And, and it's a very helpful mind for driving. And things. <laughs> but there's another center within the psyche, the soul. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Uh, is that uh, we don't really believe in the soul. Right. If you really want to get down to the hard yeah. part of it, yeah. you know, we don't believe in the soul. The ego believes it is the source of all and right. the interpreter of all. Right. That's the problem. Right. So there are these two selves. Uh, and And my understanding of writing and prayer and and many other practices afford me an opportunity to come into conscious contact, to use a 12-step phrase, eh? right out of the steps, mm -hmm. to come into conscious contact with the great reality that is within. And that's what the writing does. Yeah. Am, I, am, I, am, I, am I going in the right direction there, James? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are other ways to do this than writing, but the writing yes. uh, is an opportunity. It opens a space where you can do this. It's responsive to that. And if you go in with a certain kind of attitude or intention, then it, that really can be the results. We've also talked, though, about, um, you know, going into the writing, trying to get the right answers, trying to figure it out, trying to be smart, trying to trying to do a really good job and, and how that can lead you just in the opposite direction, right? You can, you can skim right off the surface of the pond and off, and off you go, right? That's, that's absolutely so. This person's asking for an exercise that's sort of like the guarantee, like you were almost like, I'm not sure if this is the intention of the question, but you were saying it's not a slot machine. It's not a guarantee. You can't, uh, you don't put the quarter in and get the, get the toy out, right? <laughs> and I don't that. know that you will ever be certain Right. Right. Look out for certainty. <laughs> it's the opposite of faith. Yeah. It's a marvelous definition. Yeah. That, 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 that the opposite of faith is certainty. You would never think of that. <laughs> no, there's, a, there's, a, there's too many people saying the opposite of that. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. I know. I yeah. know. And it's that's in this, why I have faith, yeah. <laughs> it's in this book. It's yeah. uh, it's all it's all been figured out. Mm -hmm. And now I just have to bring myself into right relationship, right alignment with that. Right. 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 And like we said last time, you lose the dynamic, you know, you lose, yeah. the, uh, you know, it becomes rigid. So then part of the answer to this question is uh, it's it's OK that you're that you don't know. That's. I think it's necessary. And that sitting with that, I don't know. And just inhabiting that is like part of the answer. Be in that messy middle space of I, of I don't know. Right? Yes, but pay close attention to how it feels. Uh -huh. That's, that's been my, been my experience. Uh -huh. That when I am channeling, writing uh, this other greater self, in two-way prayer or in, uh, in art or in any, any in activity. I mean, it's not limited to this. Yeah. Um, there's a connection that happens. And I feel the flow. I have personally also had trouble distinguishing exactly between this is a moment of inspiration and this is a moment of inflation. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, you, you, and that's what you have to watch out for. 
Right. So oh, this is such a great idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's mine, mine, mine. <laughs> That's why I think the, the program has survived. It's mm. it's the insistence on humility. Yeah, yeah. That if anything kills sobriety, it is this inflation. Uh-huh. And we're all subject to it, and we can't avoid it. That's what I've come to. Yeah. It's going to happen. Right. Uh, the example I use is six, give me six green lights in a row when I'm driving down the street. You know, the highway. <laughs> six. God yeah. has finally recognized who the hell is behind this wheel. Yeah. And, and like Moses, I mean, the seas are opening for me. <laughs> you know, damn the chariots behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Let those guys get the red light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's inflation. Right. That's it. Now there's another inflation, hmm. which is the negative inflation. Oh, yeah. And that's so, oh, it's so easy to forget that. The one, if I'm understanding right, that's the one that's like, I'm so terrible. Yes. I am the worst. Oh, no, you're not, James. I am the worst. <laughs> Yeah. And we're going to we're going to duke it out. Right. Who is the worst? Yeah. That's yep. an inflation. Right. That's an inflation too. So so it's watchfulness. It's step 10. And I have to bring this element of watchfulness to <clears throat> my prayer. Yeah. That's the great thing I got from uh, Tom Powers. If you don't watch, you don't know what the hell to pray for. Yeah. But if you do watch, you're going to see yourself in one of those inflations, uh, up or down. Yeah. R- rather than calmly listening, available, present. Mm. And there's a peace that comes with that. A peace of mind that passes mm-hmm. all understanding is the, right. <laughs> is the is scripture content. It passes all understanding, but it doesn't pass experience. So it's right, we've used this phrase before, that the ego is then right-sized. Yeah. It must participate in this process. And this is, this is to the, the writer of that question. It must participate, but it cannot dominate mm-hmm. or control. Right. And you better believe it wants to. Right. So it's watching these, these things. And, and this is where, for me, the four absolutes uh, come into the program. And and Dr. Bob sa- said it, and I think he said it well, that, you know, if if the guidance that I'm getting is honest, pure, unselfish, loving, it can't be far from the truth. Uh-huh. It may not be the truth, <laughs> uh, yeah. but yeah. it can't be too far. Right. Uh-huh. So we have, right, we have, we have checking, we can check, right? We can, we can check. We can check with the absolutes. We can check with other people in recovery. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to be bound by them. That's an interesting point too. Yeah. What if everybody said to you, James, no, no, don't go back to school. Right. <laughs> and, they, and they may well have. Sure. Right. You may, you may be guided to do something that's very impractical in, in the eyes of the world. Yep. I know some people who their spiritual experience began when everybody in recovery was telling them to do one thing, yeah. but the spirit was telling them to do something else. Yeah. Right? Now this is dangerous as hell. That's <laughs> really, but it's Not, again, it's another rabbit this. hole that's worth going down. Yeah. It's worth going down. Right. To thine own self to be true. Not to the group be true. Mm-hmm. That's not it. Not to right. the church be true. Right. Now, if you're going to go against those, you got to be damn careful. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity for inflation is huge. Right. But sometimes you're called to step outside of something. Yeah. And that calls for a different kind of consciousness that, that not everybody's going to have. Mm-hmm. You know? Tricky. Very tricky. Very, Very murky. tricky. Which is why we began this uh, answering this question with, well, you don't always know. It's not always clear. No, it's not get a clear good answer. get a good rabbi. A good <laughs> rabbi. Well, what are we gonna do? <laughs> and this hand is that, and that hand is the other. Right. Right. And it, 
and, and, and it's maneuvering uh, yeah. without absolute assurance. And that quote was so helpful for me when I first heard it, you know, if the opposite of um, faith is certainty. Yeah, yeah. I never would have thought of that. But when I, when I reflected on it, it's getting to the truth of what uh, this man is yeah is asking yeah i kind of want to i kind of want to go after the part of the question here that says writing exercises i feel like a professional obligation here <laughs> as okay, a writing cool. as a writing teacher to yes. like at least think seriously about are there some exercises that lend themselves more to the uncertainty the irrational the 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 bubbling up of stuff uh than others and i'm i'm thinking of two things first i'm thinking of stuff that i would do in my classroom um there are plenty of people that come into my classroom that have kind of a bad history with writing classes they've yeah. been told they're not good writers they've been told they do everything wrong they get lots of red ink and they have this kind of internalized like oh this is a chore and i have to struggle hard to do it right and i never do i feel bad Right. right. And to sort of break that up, one thing that you that we do is we do a sort of expressive writing exercises. And that means they're often timed and they're they're open ended prompts mm -hmm. and they're just kind of and they're private. They're often private. No one's going to see this but you not ready for publication. That's right. You can't <laughs> possibly get this wrong and nobody can judge you because they'll never see it. Write your answer to this question. Whatever the question is, we're going to do some research project. Maybe it's what kinds of things interest you, right? And so you're yes. trying to discover a topic this way and you just anything that comes to mind. We're going to write for seven minutes. We're going to write for 10 minutes. Just go. I recently talked to, uh, if you go to recoverywriting.org and look at the past uh, posts on the, on the blog that's connected to that. Um, I just talked to some folks in Vermont. They're writers for recovery. And they do these little um, workshops, not quite the right word, but it's like a, a, like a group that does creative writing prompts. And then, they, and then they share them and talk about them as folks in recovery. So there'll be like a, a short little snippet of something that's like, um, I hit it far deep inside, something like that. And then you have seven minutes to just write whatever comes to mind in response to that little prompt, right? Uh, and then if you want, you can share. I think like prompts like that because they're open-ended. Rather than a checklist answering yeah. 50 questions. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not like a grid to fill in. There's not like, you know, fill in the blanks kind of a thing. It's just could be anything. It could be, there's no right or wrong answer. It could be anything that comes up and the exercise tells you that. I wonder. Yeah. You, you've led people through I wonder if when I'm approaching that, I'm yeah. not going to begin sensing two different voices. Mm -hmm. Do I write the, the nice thing? Uh huh. <laughs> or do I write what really just came up into my mind? Right. I There's think. There's a choice. There's a choice. Yes. There is a choice. And part of the thing, the beauty about the Writers for Recovery thing is it's seven minutes. You have seven minutes to write. I think the time pressure does a little bit. It can't, not always. You're still going to hear those two voices, but it right. can give you a little bit of a bypass to where. Yeah, hey. I have to think, I just got to put it now down. Now or never, buddy. <laughs> right. So right. you're just writing, and maybe you're not worrying too much about. Um, Hell, you ain't going to hear what I'm writing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that rule has to be paramount. Yes. You don't have to share. No, no, no don't have to share. And so you might still in the back of your head think, Oh, what if I, people might hear this? Uh oh, like you, seven minutes is enough time to get you on. You might that. also hear the ego. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to share. I yeah. want to write clever stuff, holy stuff, beautiful stuff. Right. Right. You're already sunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. I love it. <laughs> There's no perfect exercise that's going to get you outside of this these problem set, right? Jung had an expression that I've I've come to love, that that uh, the way we treat the unconscious 
is the way the unconscious will treat us. Oh. And so what I'm hearing is if I enter into this exercise with an open mind and not a controlling uh, ego, right. there is an, a, a likelihood that I'm going to be able to access parts of self mm -hmm. that may have been hidden or less dominant or <laughs> less, uh, less active in my, in my mind. Am, am I going right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Do you encounter the same dynamics with two-way prayer? Absolutely. So the same things that we were just describing of the creative writer in recovery maybe apply again to the... Exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Yeah. When I sit down in the morning, if I kind of know what's going to happen, forget it. If I'm not bringing an honest and needy question to the writing, yeah. forget it. Okay. Okay. If I'm going to meditate and comment on some holy writing that I just <laughs> read from somebody else, uh -huh. eh, forget it. it. Might look okay. nice, uh, uh -huh. ready for publication. Put it mm. on the blog. Mm -hmm. you know? But is it is it going to get to the depths of me, the me that feels separated from? See, this is this is this is. <laughs> Yeah. Was it uh, Ramdas? Ramdas, remember uh -huh. Ramdas? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was he was once giving a lecture, okay, <laughs> heavy, heavy lecture, yeah. uh, very, very deep, difficult material that he's presenting to the group, and yeah. there's a woman who's in the front row, and he's watching her, his eyes catch her, and and he knows she's getting it. Mm. She's getting it. Yeah. And, and he goes up after the lecture is over and says, Madam, I, I, was, I was so enthralled watching you because I knew every word I was saying was registering with you. Yeah. What is your practice? How do you, how, what, what, what's your secret? And she said, I crochet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I crochet. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 my ego uh -huh. is not in control. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a mindlessness that 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 I'm, I'm just able 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 to do. I mean, it's the beads yeah. and uh, meditation practices. It's the uh -huh. uh, you know um, prayer, the Jesus prayer. It's sure. It's, it's 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 not that there's magic in in the process. There's an opening yeah that has to happen and it, and and if there is an opening then what you're saying has room to get uh -huh. through uh -huh. Uh -huh. and that's the thing that i have to bring to it and do i bring it to it every no i don't and do i suffer as a result of that yes i do right <laughs> and is the persona just right there saying you know Happy, 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 love, love, love. Uh, and and what's really going on is I'm pissed inside. Mm. I'm terrified inside. Well, you bring that. You know, what was the question you asked in the in the beginning for the writing exercise you, you used to? What was the, the the seven minutes on what subject? You, you oh, read. just like, yeah, like a prompt that's like, it could be any sort of a well, you sentence. gave one. You gave yeah, it. Um, I hid it deep inside. Ah, I hid it deep inside. Yeah, just an evocative little fragment like that. It is it. evocative. Who yeah. hasn't hidden stuff uh -huh. deep inside? Right, right. Now, if I'm going to bring honesty mm -hmm. to, to this work, I have to bring that. Right. Not, well, here's something safe that I hid inside. Right, right. You, 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 are you going to go to it? All right. You know, and that's why I may mean, think, you know, the honesty of in the absolutes is 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 so helpful. That uh, it's key. It's key. It's key. Foundation. It's key. And it's the trickiest part. It's the trickiest part. And I think we started with that one, didn't we? In the right. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we did. started with that, and you have to start with that one. It's what step one is all about, isn't it? 
Yeah. I'm hopeless. I'm a failure. I'm, I, I need, I desperately need help. That's the, that's the ego collapse. Well, that, yeah. uh, that, <laughs> that opens me up to, to hearing something else. That is, so that is, maybe this is a little bit of a segue or I'm not sure, but there's an aspect to writing that can sometimes provide exactly that, almost like a first step experience. Okay. Um, and that is the confrontation with the blank page. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is something that a lot of writers experience. Uh, we want to, we want to produce great things <laughs> right, right? and we look at the blank page and it's like a brick wall. That right? was a big struggle for you. Wasn't it James? In, yeah, in your... sure. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had to give it up. All right. Yeah, that's right. You had to give it up. Even if you're not like, like I was trying to become a literary genius, <laughs> <laughs> right. even if you're just trying to like finish your homework or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The blank page can present this, like, we call it writer's block, right? Exactly. Exactly. We, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't figure anything out. I don't know what to say. I just total blank. I don't know where to get ideas from. I don't know how to answer this question. I don't even know what I'm, who am I? <laughs> it can really like confront you with a, with a problem that the ego can't immediately solve. Right. And has to rely on something else. Right. So, so you give them the instruction, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is true. This is what you are facing. You've explained it very nicely to me. Now, right. Yeah. I get the same damn thing with people uh, uh, struggling with two-way prayer. Okay. Well, yeah. I sit there and nothing comes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm not hearing a voice. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A and the answer, right. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah. it is doesn't matter just put it in whatever, put it it down. whatever it is start yeah. writing and yeah I, I use the you know start with a term of endearment that's not oxford group but uh i find it helpful gives you a little a little bit of a way in a little right? of the way in opens yeah. the door yeah my precious my beloved Ooh. Mm -hmm. something melts what melts the ego melts right right and something now has room. I think it's one of the things we're going to get to. If uh -huh. we ever get to it, <laughs> we may go to part three. <laughs> but it, it affords room for something else to come through. Right. Yeah. 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 So when, um, when you're yeah. when you when you when your students are doing the, that exercise. Yeah. So, so it's seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, just right. Yeah. But then you're going to go back, right? And sure. You're gonna, and you're going to see something. Yes. If it's in class and I'm, and I'm trying to help you come up with an idea for a paper. Yeah. Then you're going back to the, to whatever you wrote in the seven minutes, somewhere in there, there's something you said that resonates with you. Illuminative thought. Yeah. Or it's, yeah, it's just something that's worth exploring a little more and you read it over it and you circle one thing, two things, three things. Right. It, this is how you do dream analysis. Sure. And then that becomes the seed for the next seven minutes, right? Exactly. Start with that and see where it goes. Exactly. And you're not trying to figure anything out. You're just trying to follow a little thread of the stuff that's bubbling up, right? And, and you're going to look for the light, look for the illumination. Yeah. Yeah. That there was something that I wrote in those seven minutes that uh something i've been hiding from yeah that maybe came close mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. now, that's not like, every student's gonna do that <laughs> no 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 but uh, but it's the opportunity right it is an opportunity it is an opportunity i'm interested in meeting the ego in all of its forms where mm -hmm. it wants to be in control right. and in, in that illuminative thought that, that somebody came up with, yeah. it, it's observing it. Uh huh. It, uh -huh. And it's almost, so it's, it's maybe entree into this other voice that is coming from within. Yeah. When you work with folks who struggle to hear, uh, something into a prayer. You tell them just right. Well, I tell them first. 
ongoing make, struggle with make, this? Or no, do you, make oh. sure you got a damn good need. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's 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 absolutely critical. Uh. See, I think we got something in in, in AA and with the ten step stuff. Yeah. That uh, there's a flow. You go 10, 11, 12. Uh huh. Ten, I watch. Uh huh. And so part of two way prayer is watchfulness. Buddhist medi- Buddhist uh, mindfulness, call it yeah. what you will, you know, it, but it's it's identifying the need, the internal need that the ego is up against. Right. Now, bring that to my paper. That's a trick already. It is. Right, because I might already be obscuring that for myself. In fact, often I think to be to uh, I think I personally am often trying not to be aware of what I really need. <laughs> but are you aware that you're trying not to be aware? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that, this is a little bit of a trick, right? It is a little, a little bit of a trick. It is. Yeah. Well, this whole thing is a little bit of a trick. Yeah. I mean, uh, what the hell does the big book mean? Where it says, you know, free me from the bondage of self. Mm-hmm. Does it mean? Oh, I'm 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 just interested in self-interest. No, I think it means a heck of a lot more than that. Yeah, but I am in a prison. Right. My ego in charge is a prison. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there freedom? That's that's why I was so taken last episode by that woman who said the four absolutes are not chains. Freedom. The four freedoms. Yeah. Right. That whatever the fearful thing that comes up, oh, I can't look at this. Oh, if you, but if you look at it, and if you look at it in the presence of God, in the presence of love, not in the presence of I'm going to analyze myself. Mm-hmm. That's why listening to another voice outside of ego is such a helpful technique. Yeah. It, it just sets the parameters for something to happen. That's something that's sparking a, a memory in me or like a, another angle on this, which is a couple of times I've offered um, exercises to people that are kind of like little baby steps moving toward listening to another character, say, or yes. another voice, right? Yes. Um, in the book, I have a section that I talk about the three letters and the first letter is uh this this woman's going to write a letter to her mom and she's just going to say whatever she needs to say but she's actually going to send it to her mom the mom is sort of um a presence in the writing of that letter because you're worried about what she's going to say right that mom's voice is already dictating stuff that you're saying but it's a sort of ego combat (laughs) or whatever (laughs) with the mom right so you're, if you can pay attention to that, you can already see how some other voice is like shaping what you're writing. And so exactly. Yes, I'm with you. Yep. We shift over to letter number two. You're going to write the letter to mom, and you are not going to send it. Right? right. Mom's still alive, but you're not. You're not going to send it. Uh, and so that sort of detaches that second voice a little bit, except that it's still playing this role of all the things I wish I could say. Yes. All the things that are in my heart that I needed to say, but can't, and they're all going to come onto the page. Right? I'm feeling freer. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. This is a very therapeutic uh, kind of writing to be able to free yourself up to say something to somebody without right. actually ever having to say it. Right. Which you're talking fifth step stuff. Yeah, that's right. F- yeah. Fourth and fifth. Yeah. Then there's a kind of a letter that's, um, I guess this is turning into four letters as I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the post letter, office needs the money, so that's yeah, the, <laughs> the letter to the mom who's passed away. Right? Yes, yes. This is something that you might write in in step nine. People find that they have amends or unfinished business, sure, and they want to resolve that. And how do I do that with someone who's passed away? Well, often we say, "Why don't you write them a letter? Um, maybe you can either read it and burn it, or you take it to their graveside or something." There's some kind of a ritual around that. And the writing of that letter, the 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 mother figure is still shaping what you have to say, but the relationship is really different now, right? Because the audience is different. Okay. Yeah. The final like move is then to say, "All right, how about you write a letter, but this time you're writing it from your mother who is passed." Exactly. Away. Exactly. And that suddenly takes on this different character. But it, you know, it'll come. 
right? So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. This is active imagination. Yeah, right. And you, I Jung think, said, yeah. I, I'm still, uh, he said it's better to only do this with people who are deceased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. they're deceased, absolutely. Right. Because if they're alive, I can be like, oh, I had this great conversation with you yesterday. Yeah, exactly. You weren't around. You weren't around. <laughs> this is what you should be saying right now, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> right right i also think it might be an easier thing to start but I've, writing. Done I've done that jay i've done that right. yeah, yeah, yeah i've done i've done it you know i had to work on my father relationship my mother uh, relationship. i mean that's the stuff that uh yeah, right. neuroses is built upon huh? you know <laughs> <laughs> these are the building blocks that we, right. we all have to go through and, and we've got those voices in us all the time all the time whether we're aware of it or not they're there and the, they're in good ways and bad they're they're pushing on us and having us do things that right exactly and, and we I gotta like break it. free yeah of those voices and that that is part of it yeah that is part of this process but for then, some people, yeah well, well in, in listening back yeah what i get or got in in my cases with mother and father yeah was the stuff that they were the impact of their parents on them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were free to talk about that to me wow yeah which then put them in a different light for me all right you're kind of in it together now you're in the family we're system together, together. we're yeah. passing on the stuff yeah when does it stop mm-hmm when does this unconscious stuff that goes on generation after generation stop? Yeah. Right. It, it stops when we all kind of get together and look at it and say, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. So you learned something genuine about your folks by doing that kind of writing. Absolutely. Felt like something really truer about them came through. Yes. Then would have maybe even in life never did come through in life right yeah right and now you're able to see it in a different so there's a there's a there's a there's a truth or an honesty to it that's like and a letting shocking. go a letting yeah. go and a compassion yeah and, and a freedom uh, back to our australia friend <laughs> yeah. a freedom that, that, right yeah i'm wondering if because those voices are so with us all the time already mm -hmm. if doing that kind of writing then is like a good scaffolding a good build up to to two-way prayer because the voice of god is not i mean i think it is always with us all the time but it's so it's harder right harder to to grasp or imagine in some ways well uh i, I might take a, a different view okay yeah i might take a different view and yeah. and, and and maybe for some what you're saying is right okay uh, that if that came first then you can go to the other Mm -hmm. But what I have experienced, and again, this is this is me and people that I've worked with, is that if you can get in touch with unconditional love, mm. and that's God, yeah, then you can tackle anything. Right. So I find get that first, find that that relationship first. You know, and it's interesting. I, I I reflected a little bit on where we went last time, and you know, one of one of the things is um, one of the exercises I've done over the years is um, when I, so I, I I think I think unfortunately yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> and I think of God, my Father. Well, write to God, your mother. Mm, okay. And see what comes up. Mm -hmm. And now I'm listening to God, my mother. Huh what's coming through mm -hmm. it's very different okay it's very different right and 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 the checkpoints are always the four absolutes yeah i went to this guy you know uh james hauk and uh, yeah right you know you know of him oxford, oxford group guy yeah yeah got sober the day after bill wilson right so, and he said two-way prayer bill is all about the four absolutes what about this is just a random idea what about personifying the absolutes individually and yes. dialoguing with them be, be wonderful right be wonderful or That's or go the yeah. opposite huh. and uh, uh 
dialogue with the hate that lives right in the hate and the selfishness and the fear the selfishness. And the, yeah. personify those right right and it, it is in the personification and isn't this what uh, creative writing is about yeah that you're yeah, going to take you're going to you're going to invent characters yep well are you really going to invent them or are they already living inside you <laughs> in some way shape yeah Right. This is one of my favorite stories from the Robert Johnson's uh, inner work. Okay, go. Uh, he tells a story about a client who was very resistant to the therapy. You might, you know this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but go ahead. It's good. And he's like, uh, the client said, okay, you know, Johnson sends him home and says, you know, do this active imagination stuff. And the client's like, well, I'll, I'll trick the therapist and I'll write this elaborate drama that I'm just making up and doesn't have anything to do with active imagination. Right. Uh, so he comes in and he reads this story and it's like a soap opera or whatever. It's really dramatic and all these movements and stuff. And Robert Johnson kind of gets that he's doing this. He knows that he's trying to trick him. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he just, he doesn't, he doesn't call him out. He says, okay, that's a, very well done. <laughs> Let's see it again next week. And so this goes on for, for a while. And so finally at the, at the, you know, crescendo of this plot arc that the guy's been developing, the client says, ha ha, I tricked you. None of this was real. <laughs> yeah. I just made it all up. And Robert Johnson doesn't respond to that at all. He just kind of stares back at him and waits for a minute. And eventually it dawns on the guy that even though he was making it all up, it was all real. Yes. It was all the inner figures and inner voices that that needed to be expressed. All got expressed in him, quote unquote, making it up. Active imagination really means that, right? So the guy has this like, oh no, <laughs> right? Defeat of his own ego, thinking he was being clever. So even in just the act of creativity, right, right? It's coming. He accessed the deceiver in himself. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Am I I'm getting it? Yeah. Yeah, he that, was, that, he, yeah. Yeah. I, he's revealing, we're revealing ourselves all the right. time. Right. All the time. And all the aspects of, so he was being this, this sneaky guy, you know, getting away with something in therapy. But in fact, behind that was genuine work and expression of his inner figures coming up. And, it, and, and yeah. so writing, writing gives you an opportunity to have these inner figures, inner characters, mm -hmm. uh, archetypes, in, yep. you can call them that, uh, to give them expression. Yeah. And, and 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 this is where the ego is so important that it not identify with them. Yeah. That because that's where inflation comes in. If yeah. it identifies with them, they're gonna overpower him or her and, yeah. and take over. Yeah. This there's, there's uh there's an aspect to the story that I really like, which is that um we we've been talking earlier about well, the ego can can kind of get in and take control or it can muddy the waters and mess things up. And here's a case where a guy was acting purely out of ego, but in fact, the, it was it was working anyway. <laughs> like unbeknownst to him, <laughs> the 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 deeper voice was coming through anyway. And wow, what a twist, what a twist on the on the dynamic there that like if you're if you're expressing it can come in spite of you yes what, what came to mind when you when you were saying that james is my life <laughs> is the perfect laboratory mm. for my stuff yeah yeah <laughs> i don't need somebody else's life right i need to look at my life mm. and within my life is an opportunity <laughs> mm. to become See, if that guy can say, oh, look how deceptive I am. Yeah. And, 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 and get behind that and talk to the deceiver in active imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you first show up in my life? Right. Why are you so insecure that you have mm. to attack the man I really like? And then, and, then, and then that character, that inner part, is able to talk about its fear insecurity 98 percent of the time it goes back to childhood 
When right. did you first appear? Mm. You know? right. Anyone who tells their <laughs> AA story um, and starts with the first drink, they've already lost me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It, but the ones who go back to the original wound mm -hmm. uh, and then how drink came along to cover up the wound. Mm -hmm. You got me. Right. I'm going to I'm going to travel with you mm -hmm. because there's going to be an unraveling uh, of that. And right. that's that's why the writing uh, is a vehicle that affords me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. It take you in a safe in a safe zone. It takes you. You can yeah. go pretty much anywhere with that and be safe. Right. That's right. Um, That's right. Okay. So we better we better move on, or we're never going to get. I uh, know. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, insight, correction, and direction. Writing gives us opportunities to ask for insight. Yep. Correction and direction. May, uh, so comment on each of those. Insight. So, yeah. Insight. Uh, insight, I think we've, 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 we've been it? it's kind of been a theme we've been talking about all yeah, along, yeah. right? Which yeah. is, um, I need to finish my fourth step. I need to find out where I've gone wrong or what my moral shortcomings are. And I don't know. Something shows up and answers the question, right? That's, that's an act of insight. Insight, right? uh, a lifting of the veil. Yeah. Yeah. And the seeing what is behind, that's a, which that's I it. could not see before. Right. Insight. Couldn't okay. see it. Now I can. That's an, that's an experience of insight. Correction. Correction and direction is a, is kind of a pair um, that I get from the Oxford group. I can't remember what book it's from, but I was reading somebody talking about it. I haven't found The only place I've found it was with that woman I interviewed. Oh, really? It was in I, her I little pamphlet. I read it somewhere. Maybe maybe I read her pamphlet, but I feel like yeah, it might connection, be Cecil Rose. It was the it's, the it's the 12 steps. Connection, yeah. correction, direction. Yeah. Right. Right. Connection. <laughs> I'm I'm aligning myself yeah. with this this source, capital S. Yeah. I'm aligning. And then then there comes the, the next uh, several steps, four <laughs> through nine. Yep. Correcting what's wrong. Yep. What Edinger would, would call the ego self axis, the the channel, the the, mm -hmm. the linkage. But what's wrong? Yeah. Why is there a disturbance in the force? That's the correction. And you're asking correction. in a way, that's also you're asking for an insight into what's wrong, right? You're asking for a revelation yes. of why am I so screwed up? Why am I so angry? Why am yeah. I all spun out of shape? Why am I right? Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. And then the direction is, it can, it can take a couple of forms. What do I do about it? I'm all messed up. What do I do about it? I don't know how to fix this, obviously. So right. you're going to have it. to show me, right? Uh, and then too, if you have a clear conscience, it can also be like, all right, things are seem okay at the moment, but what else can I do, right? This can be a kind of a, a guidance to do good, right? A direction towards a betterment of the life. You had a guidance to go get your PhD. That's true. Yeah. The the Oxford group people talk about about two levels. It's it, one is at the the, the micro level, the small, yeah. and the macro level. Yeah. And so it's it's daily guidance, mm -hmm. but it's also big time guidance. Right. I had right. that with going back to become a priest. Mm. It was unfinished business for me. Right. I was playing mass at seven, eight, nine years old. And I'm very sick when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> can't <laughs> <It's>, escape it. <laughs> yeah, I can't escape it, you know? So yeah. um, by that time, I'm, uh, I'm married. I got three kids and, uh, uh, you know, the Jesuits. Would, <laughs> oh, yeah. But you had your chance. You, know? <laughs> you were too immature. Mm. I had a letter from my my superior when I was going in the Episcopal Church for ordination. And and I, I reconnected with my old superior in the Jesuits because uh, he said, well, and I'm 50 or so at this age or 52, yeah. I don't remember. 
But he said, well, it seems like Bill has finally matured enough to, uh, we, we loved him, but he mm -hmm. wasn't there. Right, right. You know? He wasn't ready. Yeah. And, and the I knew came I, when it was time to go back. When, the director came, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think in the big picture items, mm -hmm. it, it, it runs deep. Your writing thing, James, right, I, right. I would guess that goes back to childhood. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You said that. I want to yep. be on the yep. refrigerator. First episode. Yeah. We've tried to, I tried to kind of unpack that a little bit. Yes, it's, you did. It's you deep did stuff. Nicely. Yeah. It's deep stuff. Yeah. That's for me, it's always been, this is a rabbit hole again, but it's always been a little easier to discern the big ticket stuff than the daily stuff. The daily stuff. Hmm. The small item stuff, I want to be like, eh, I'd rather play video games. <laughs> I can resist that a little easier. But when it's like, hey, dude, you need to get your PhD, it's harder to shake. It's big. It's loud. It's like, you know, it's a gravity to but it. But you can shake it. You can shake it. I, yeah, you, I did. For you a did while. for a long time. That's right. Yeah. You did for a long time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, inside correction, but, if you, correction. but you know, okay, yeah. let, let's play with these for for a minute. Okay. But if, sure. if I if I if I treat the daily, yeah, as so we're staying with direction. Yeah, I've I, I've had some guidance right. to do something specifically. Yes, do not do not play the video games. I know, I know, well, <laughs> or play them for an hour. Oh, right, and then go to play play. them with your son, or it, it, it's yeah. not that there's anything necessarily wrong with video games. No, 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 no. It's not it's the avoidance it's that's, the, that's the issue, right? Yeah, and 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 what is the payoff for obedience mm -hmm. to the voice? I mean, it's the continued connection. Yes, it is, and it's it, and it, and then it's the next thing. Right. That's it's right. The deeper and it's the healing and it's the growth and it's the it's really the whole the whole package. It's everything. Right? That's, it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So you yeah. got you got some you introduced me to something about this that I think is really key and really interesting. And it's so simple, but it's so kind of like cool. You told me that when you do your two way prayer and it feels like there's a luminous thing that needs to be attended to. Right. You, you draw a box. Yes. Right next to it. And that's, that's a right. check. It's a check box. That's right. And you can look back, and if you if you did it, you can put a check <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, or or, yeah. or sometimes I do it during the day. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So the writing then has a, this built-in kind of accountability to like what I've learned, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now let's ask the question. Yeah. Is this from God or is it from me? Ooh. Does it matter? Okay. What right. matters is how do I treat it. Mm hmm. That's a different take, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a different take. I right. treat it as if it passes the test. It's honest, pure, unselfish, loving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I wrote it. Now my ego is going to step in and say, well, that's bullshit. You know? <laughs> well, that's not God's voice. Yeah. All right. You know? Uh huh. I mean, be prepared for that. It's going to come. Right. It's going to come. Or I'm just going to blow it off. Right. I'm not even going to pay attention to it. I'm going to go back there tomorrow and look at what I wrote and say, oh, my God, did I write that? I, I was asked to do six things, and I did none of them. Right. <laughs> right. Well, the Oxford group people, what they say, well, this is normal. This is normal. Okay. So that way, I want to pause on that because Damn. my my Protestant self wants to feel really bad about not oh. having killed. I want to just be like the worst guy now. Well, there's your ego again. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, flagellation. Oh, I'm no right. good. I'm no right. good. I'm no but good. so you're telling me the Oxford group says if you have boxes that you didn't check, this is normal. That we're normalizing this, right? Well, yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. Now you're going to pay a price for that, right? Well, and, and, and you named it the, the connection. Mm -hmm. If the voice, if the voice is getting uh, uh, less uh, active. Luminous, yeah. Luminous, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't feel connected. Uh -huh. Well, they say, well, why the hell should you be? You're uh -huh. not listening to what it tells you to do anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which makes a certain amount of sense, doesn't it? Sure. The, the, it's like the, 
uh, and I try to, for me, I have to like reframe this into the least shaming language possible or I, or I screw myself up with it really fast. Yes, right? yes. Uh, God help the Baptists and the Catholics. That's, yeah. I mean, we have gotten it bad. Yeah, but yeah. It's like, here's the next thing that you can do that is the, the gift I want to give you. It's the best thing for you. Uh, when you do it, you're going to be so, you're going to be happy that you did, right? And this is the healing that you need right now. That healing isn't different the next day when I haven't done it, right? It's still there waiting for me to do. They would say, God has a plan. Yeah. If I don't follow through on that plan, God yeah. has another plan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, right. I, I interpret that as taking into consideration that we're human beings. Yeah. And, and that the ego has asserted itself once again. Yeah. It has taken on, when we talk about inflation, I mean, I really take Jung seriously. Yeah. When, when, when we're talking about inflation, we're talking about taking on godlike qualities. We are playing God. Mm -hmm. I received guidance this morning. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lord. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm busy. Right. right. <laughs> right. I got things to do, serious things to do, God, serious things to do, not the silly things that you just told me to do. All right. So it's how, you, it treat the, yeah. you treat the unconscious a certain way, that's the way it's going to treat you. Right. So there's, you're, you're developing a relationship with the <laughs> deepest parts of self. Mm -hmm. That's what prayer is all about, and, and prayerful writing, because we're talking about writing in relationship to this higher power, um, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's 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 figuring out what that relationship is. We talk about accountability, imagination. We've talked yep. about imagination. Yep, yep. Uh, it sustains a relationship with the divine, and then we, we're talking about that too. That that yeah. as as I enter, and, and I, I would say this is true for me. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I, I've been less than perfect, for God's sakes, in following through on the guidance. And so is everybody that I work with. All right. You know, well, right. It's, it's, it's the human condition. Right. It's the human condition. You know? uh, uh. And, um, and, and that's okay. huh? But the relationship takes a turn. I mean, I am so much more trusting of uh of it mm. of the voice mm -hmm. of the presence yeah and it's not determined by whether i screw up or not there's nothing to do with that because what i get in my two-way prayer is oh are you ready now uh-huh are you ready to listen now <laughs> huh? do you ever can i ask a random one do you ever sure. go back on something that's unchecked and it feels like like you there's a resistance to it or something yeah, do you ever yeah, go yeah. back and, and dialogue about that? Say, Absolutely. like, hey, I don't know how to do this one. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm up for it. And, it's, and see what, you, and usually, see what it's usually am I willing? Yeah. Okay. It's almost always am I willing, not how. Yeah. Or, okay. If it's a how question, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but am I willing to do it? I want to disregard it. Yeah. I want to yeah. hide from it. I want to push it back down. Yeah. So you you would say that and then, and then ask what that's that could be a pressing question, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Why am I so resistant to this? Right. Help me help me understand that. And right. the voice understands that. Right. The voice will speak to that. All right. Okay. And it will calmly lead me. We talk about promptings or pushings and I mean that's what this this inner self is all about it, it it's um I, i'm reading some people who um uh are kind of equating god with evolution okay interesting it's not bad it's not bad there's that, creativity there what well, is but yeah. uh, there is evolution going on at the physical level mm -hmm. well there's evolution going on at the at the spiritual level at the psychological level yeah you know, you and I and everyone is an experiment. And mm -hmm. we're either going to advance the, the creativity yeah. uh, and, and, and this work with God, 
or we're not. Uh, and group wise, it's looking like we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we ain't doing it. humanity as a whole. Yeah, I'm talking about trouble. humanity as a whole. We're yeah. having some trouble. Yeah, we're having some trouble. And until we start looking at this in in the spiritual realm of things, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that we're going to get to it. You know, because yeah. there's not, there's not a, a, a formula that's going to do it. It's right. a relationship that's going to do it. Right. And that's it's, tricky. It's it's, it's yeah. the incarnation of God mm -hmm. in in James Ryan. Oof, oof. <laughs> is Good luck, it, everybody. Is, <laughs> is it happening or is uh -huh. it not? Uh, are you becoming more of you who you are meant to be or uh, are you not uh, uh, are, are, are you deviating away from or are you becoming more that's right. the question yeah you know? and the answer is so so it's a i'm wiggling yes 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 but 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 is it Back going forward. for is it going forward in the long run yes and that's that's that's, that's what's important Right. Not not the daily. Not I screwed up. Of course you screwed up. Right. Of course you screwed up. Right, right, right. But can I get behind the screw up? Yeah. Take ownership of the screw up. Uh, work work through the guilt is no help to this screw up. Right. You know. If I'm learning. Yes. I should expect that I'm. I don't know yet. Right. I should expect that I, I'm going to make mistakes because right. those. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. It's how you grow. It's right. how you change. Yeah. Until you're ready to give it up. All right. I think we need to uh, we need to uh, wrap this one up. Yeah. Wrap this one up because we uh, and we'll come back to it in about six months. So uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, find another, another your next book. You need to write. That's right. Book. <laughs> <laughs> <Better get> working. <laughs> we we will we will tackle that one. So where are we going next? Um, relationships will be the yeah. next. Yeah, transforms our relationships. How does it change your relationships? And we can we can include the God relationship there. Yep. And how writing can be used to help others. Sure. Yeah. So yep. um, th th those are the next two episodes we're going to tackle. So James, you're my favorite hunting buddy. Hey, uh, it's fun. <laughs> rabbit. There ain't a rabbit that's safe for twenty <laughs> miles in either direction right. from us. We're going in that hole and <laughs> <laughs> every different which way, yeah. Every single way. Hey, hey, it has been fun. I, I hope. Thank you, James. It, it, it's been uh, been really, 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 really helpful. And yeah. I hope you guys have uh, uh, benefited uh, from it. I hope the guy who asked the question uh, got yeah. something out of it uh, as well. So thank you for listening. Hey, God bless and keep coming back. Mm -hmm.